What's up, beautiful people? In today's video, we're gonna talk about advice I would give to other people trying to quit drinking alcohol. Uh, alcohol is a very tricky substance to quit because it is highly addictive. But not only that, the big part of quitting alcohol is actually the psychological game behind it. Because we think in our brains that we don't need to stop drinking until we're an alcoholic or we have a problem. <laughs> um, but on another level, it's like, what's it going to take a person to actually get to the place in their lives to say that alcohol is a problem for them? And I'm going to tell you something that's going to make this a lot easier. And honestly, if you, you don't even have to say a problem, you don't, it doesn't have to be that severe. It can just be you want to feel healthier. You want to feel better about yourself. It could be something little. You don't have to go on this grand bridge and be like, I have a drinking problem. I need to stop. Because it's not my place, it's not anybody's place to say who has a drinking problem. When I quit drinking, I personally came to this realization that alcohol is no longer serving me. And my drinking is a problem. It was hard because you have to be humble. And if you don't, if you're not good at taking accountability or extreme ownership for the decisions and things in your life, it's very hard to admit when you're not living up to your own standards for your life. And I wasn't. I wasn't being a man I was proud of. I wasn't doing things aligned with my core values. I didn't even know 100% what my core values were when I was a drinking man. I was getting lost in the moment. I was getting that dopamine spike. I was enjoying life or thought I was enjoying life, but ultimately just a lot of pain and misery. Alcohol left me feeling depressed, low, anxious, sad, beaten down, ruined relationships, a lot of just dr unnecessary drama, a lot of problems. My health was starting to feel bad and I wasn't an alcoholic. I was just a man who drank per social norms. And the crazy thing is that if you talk to any of my friends, none of them will tell you I had a drinking problem. They didn't see it. They just thought they nobody thought I had a drinking problem. Uh, I'm the one who told myself, all right, this is a problem because I don't like who I'm becoming through use of the substance. So it's not like I'm here drinking 24 seven. I'm drunk all the time. I have seizures when I quit. It, it's not like that. And a lot of times it doesn't even need to get to that point before you quit drinking alcohol. So this is my little advice video for anybody out there who is struggling with quitting because I wrestled with quitting. I probably quit like a hundred times, like in some degree or fashion, it was like I quit slash cut back like a hundred times. But these were the common things in areas where I slipped up. And these are things I've learned that will help you on your process. So first things first. When you get to that moment where you're questioning your drinking behavior and you're trying to quit slash cut back, here's what you need to understand. Prior to that, like the rest, the previous amount of time in your life, before you've come to this decision that alcohol is no longer serving you, you you didn't ask yourself those questions. And alcohol has just become a habit. It's kind of ingrained in your subconscious. Like our subconscious brain literally is 70% of the brain. The conscious mind is 30%. The subconscious is 70%. You know, like when you go out and you drive your car, you don't, you don't think about driving. After you learn to drive, you kind of just go on autopilot. Like think about that next time you're in your car and you're driving. Think about how, how much attention are you actually paying to driving? It's just, it's just like a habit. It flows. You don't really think much about it. That's exactly how alcohol works. When you drink regularly, it just becomes ingrained in your subconscious mind. Like, you know, five o'clock might be a trigger. This street might be a trigger. Going out and being social might be a trigger. There's all these like scenarios or like you feel like you need to de-stress. That might be a trigger to drink. You feel like you want to have happiness. You feel like you want to be excited. You want to go out. You want to have a good time. Like these are all triggers that are programmed in your subconscious mind telling you to drink. So when you get to that point and you make that conscious decision like, hey, Alcohol doesn't serve me anymore. I don't want this in, in my life. It's incredibly hard to quit because 70% of your brain is literally working against you, your habits. Like even though at the core of your being, at the core of your soul, you're like, fuck this shit. I'm done. I don't want to drink anymore. It, it's like that's 30% of your brain talking and it could be true and it could be humble and it could be real. And this is why people struggle with it so much and they don't understand. It's like, even though the 30%, the real you, the conscious mind knows you need to change and you need to do better. The subconscious programming, it's still there and it's still telling you to drink and it's still flagging you and giving you cravings and urges and the need for this substance that's been in your life for X amount of years or whatever. 
But here's the good news. Neuroplasticity is a thing. What is neuroplasticity? It is the ability of, for your brain to rewire and refire your neurons, your neural network, your mindsets, your beliefs, your patterns, your core values, the stories you tell yourself. Everything can change and you can always tell yourself a better, stronger narrative. This isn't the story where you go spiraling into depression and never quit your drinking. This is the story where you quit your drinking. You pick yourself up from rock bottom. You shave. You cut your hair. You get to the gym. You get in the best shape of your life. You get happy. You get healthy. You get an amazing job and a career and a beautiful spouse. This, this is your story. And you can tell yourself every single day what story you want to tell yourself. Is this the one of the loser who can't kick the substance? Or is this the one of the winner who, even if he has to fail and lose a hundred times, still gets back up and gets on that horse to quit because with alcohol you got to keep quitting till you quit slipping up going back to pre old behaviors that's normal and we don't think of it as normal we get bummed out about it we beat ourselves up about it we will usually let it impact our self-esteem and we will spiral and then go on a week-long bender and then just never attempt to quit drinking again no i'm telling you this now if you slip up and you drink you got to be easy on yourself yeah that's part of the process of quitting drinking. Because remember, it's 30% versus 70%. The 30% knows you want this. But until time passes by of you not ingesting the substance whenever those little triggers hit, that's how the brain rewires itself. So the more little wins you stack up, the more sober time, the more times you don't give into those urges, the more times you don't give into those cravings, the more times you don't associate alcohol with happiness or joy the subcon the conscious mind 30 percent that stuff you're telling yourself will eventually get scripted into the subconscious brain guys neuroplasticity so even if you slip up even if you relapse let's say you got like two weeks over or like a month over and then you slipped up and you drank for a couple days get back on the horse keep quitting till you quit those 30 days of sober time that's still 30 days and believe it or not, even though it might not seem like a win to you because you're back drinking again, it's a huge win because that's 30 days of you scratching the record in your brain, rewiring, refiring, and messing with the program in your mind. And you do that enough over time, of course you're going to quit drinking. Of course it's going to work out for you. Of course you're not going to feel the need for the substance anymore. I... It's been two and a half years since my last drink, and I don't feel that pull for alcohol anymore. I don't feel any triggers. I don't feel any cravings. I can go sit at a bar, and I have zero desire to even indulge in the substance. That's because I kept scratching the record, the record in my brain, and that's what you have to do. So every time you slip up, every time you fail, keep scratching the record. Keep trying. Keep quitting until you quit. Keep consuming more content like this on YouTube. Keep watching sobriety videos. Keep educating yourself about alcohol it's a toxin it's harmful there's a great andrew huberman podcast it's like two hours essentially saying that alcohol does absolutely nothing good for you at all and it's true like the science is there how is this stuff still legal it's kind of wild when you think about it but guys one be gentle when you slip up two <laughs> keep scratching the record and even if it doesn't feel like big wins to you it is big wins because the more your conscious mind stays focused and the more you commit and the more you go without drinking and try to incorporate new healthier habits, you know, working out, intermittent fasting, meditating, cold showers, quality time spent with people, those kinds of activities, they're going to boost your dopamine, your serotonin. You're going to feel better about yourself. So do more of those activities, but cut out the booze. And then eventually the, the scales will tip. It's 70-30. That's why anything, and this doesn't even apply to just like quitting drinking alcohol, you know, like new year, new me, new habits, trying to get in shape, get in the gym, eat cleaner, all the stuff you've told yourself you wanted to do that you don't stick with. It's because it's always 30 versus 70 guys. Nobody understands this until you understand this, that whenever you're trying to change, there's always a big amount of resistance because our brains are conditioned to do what's comfortable. We want to stay in our comfortable patterns, our routines. Um, if something's working for you, you're not likely to change it. That's why a lot of times you have to hit rock bottom before you change because it's hard to get motivated to change otherwise. Now, I'm not saying it can't be done. Of course it can be done. Anybody can do it. But that's why rock bottoms are such a eye-opening experience for a lot of people to get on this path. But you don't have to wait until you get a rock bottom. Like, don't wait. 
Don't wait till your health is shit. Don't wait until you keep digging this big ass grave for yourself. No, start today, guys. Start today. So I would say even if you continue drinking, like start educating yourself. One little hack that I like to do is on my social medias back when I had social media and back when I was quitting drinking, I literally just unfollowed all the alcohol pages I followed. Not, not that there were even any alcohol pages I followed, but then I was intentional. So I got on Instagram, I got on Facebook and I just typed in sober, sober life, sober living, sober is awesome. And just followed a whole bunch of sober people. And then even though I hadn't quit drinking yet, whenever I would get on, cause you know, you compulsively will pick up your phone, you'll get on your social media and then you'll consume content. We don't realize is the content we consume really does impact us. If you're watching cat videos, you're thinking about cats. If you're watching dog videos, you're thinking about dogs. If you're watching videos of people talking about how awesome sobriety is and how cool it is to be sober, well, you're refiring, you're rewiring. Those neurons in your brain are getting reset. You're incorporating new knowledge. It's getting stored into the subconscious. Eventually enough will get stored there that you will become a person who believes that this does not serve you anymore because it doesn't. It doesn't serve you anymore. That's what I'm telling you guys. Keep quitting till you quit. Keep scratching the record in your brain. Keep giving yourself high fives for the small wins. Don't spiral out if you slip up and go back to drinking because that's just part of the process. And the hardest thing with alcohol is that the physical symptoms of quitting alcohol, if there are any, it's going to be like seven to 10 days, maybe two weeks tops of actual like physical withdrawals, if any. And I'm not talking about severe withdrawals, like seizures and stuff. I'm talking about just, you know, you know, the hangover, the anxiety, the depression, your hormones feeling off, the things like that. But then after that, it's a mental game. And the thing with alcohol is that the more time you go without it, the easier it is to forget how bad the substance made you feel. Let me say that one more time. The more time you go without alcohol, the easier it is to forget how bad the substance made you feel. A lot of times we'll have this nostalgia. It'll be like two weeks, a month, three months. I'm like, man, a drink sounds so good right now. I really enjoy a drink. And then for some reason, our brains don't remember that time we spent over a toilet puking or that breakup, that relationship we ruined because we were under the influence or those poor decisions we made or those texts we sent and the two day hangover spent in bed and getting nothing done and not achieving dreams or moving forward with a life like all that stuff we forget. And that's normal. That's normal. That's just how alcohol works. Like when you stop drinking, you're going to forget a lot of those negatives. So keep your why close, your reason for quitting drinking. Keep it close to you. Pat yourself on the back for the small wins. Drinking does not undo your sober time. So keep quitting till you quit. Remember 70 versus 30. So don't take it personally because it's not, it's not, you're not weak. You're not flawed. You're not some weak human. It's just the way your, our brains are wired. Subconscious mind, 70%, subconscious mind, 30%. And now that you know this, you can go easy on yourself and celebrate the little wins and keep quitting till you quit. Keep scratching that record. The brain does refire and rewire neuroplasticity. Google it. There's hope. You can be whatever kind of person you want. You can tell yourself whatever story you want to tell yourself. So is this going to be the one where you slip up or just the one where you actually win and kill it in life because you're awesome? Yeah, I'm done. I'll see you on the next one. Usual business. Likes, comments, subscribes. Greatly appreciated. Love you. Talk to you later. Bye. Yeah, I'm about to fade away Cause every time I wake up I feel like it's Monday Something's going wrong with all the chemicals up in my brain All of a sudden I don't look at anything the same way Gotta build up of my thoughts sitting in an ashtray I'm sorry that I'm so inconvenient, okay Just let me be me and I'll stay out of your way